David and Paul, you've collaborated on a number of halls together. Tell us, how do you work to integrate the acoustics and the architecture of the space? I think that one of the reasons we like working with Paul so much is that he'll tell us what every surface needs to do, and then he'll leave us alone to design them. Um, I think that he doesn't micromanage the acoustic process. He makes his needs and desires very clear and respects our need and desire to make those surfaces as beautiful as they can be. Um, so I think we've developed over the years a, a great dynamic relationship in which we try very hard to understand Paul's goals and he tries very hard to understand ours. Um, we don't always agree and he frequently wants things that we think make absolutely no sense, but we know that he wins acoustic arguments and we generally win visual arguments. So we generally try not to end up in those sorts of conversations because if I can wage a visual war against his acoustic war or I could, he can wage an acoustic war against my visual war, um, we usually end up not doing overly well. So we try very hard to, I think, work together in a cooperative and collaborative fashion. I think it also helps that we really both like each other very much. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's very true. We, we both like each other and I think we both respect um, the, what we're doing in, in a project like the Smith Center uh, because that's really incredibly important. I mean, for me, uh, one of the things I really hate to do is to walk into a room and have every surface in the room scream at you that an acoustician was here, you know, manhandling every surface in the room. Uh, to me, it's really important that the acoustics, uh, the functioning elements of the, of the acoustics be integrated sensitively and seamlessly into the architecture. So it's a whole, it's a, you know, it's, it's, it works together and I think uh, because we both approach things from that point of view, uh, that's, that's one of the reasons our relationship on these kinds of projects works so well. I think the other thing that, that is really worth noting is that um, both Paul and I have the same goal. We want to create some of the greatest concert halls ever built. Um, and you can't do that by creating an ugly building, and you can't cre do that by creating a building that doesn't sound good. So for each of us to achieve our goal, we are highly dependent on the other one. Um, if it sounded great and nobody wanted to come because it was such an unpleasant place to be, um, you know, Paul's acoustic reputation might be enhanced, but it wouldn't be one of the greatest concert halls in the world. And likewise, if I created a really beautiful place and it sounded like terrible, um, it wouldn't further my goals either. So I think we have the same goal, which is to create some of the best concert halls the, the world has ever seen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and there's no question that that it's, it's the integration of all those elements. It's the ability to, to hear well, to see well, to have a rich visual experience that, that creates a great space. And then what caps it off over, over the years is what, what take, turns a, a well-designed space into a truly great concert hall is, is this incredible history of historic performances. You know, in Carnegie Hall, it's, it's, the, it's the fact that Tchaikovsky gave the opening night performance in 1891 and over the years here at the at Reynolds Hall and the Smith Center, it will be the great performances like the Cleveland Orchestra uh, and Franz Welser Nost uh, conducting uh, at a performance. You know, the first time that uh, one of the one of the big touring orchestras of the world uh, comes and, and energizes this room and really makes it something special.